People these days are more aware than ever about how bad some child stars had it. Tragic accounts of these young talents growing up without a childhood can be prominently found on this channel, but when they weren't even given a chance to live a full life, it's a horror all of its own. Today, we'll take a look at a child star who was cut short in life right under the spotlight. Let's take a look at what happened to Judith Barcy. Be advised, this is going to be a tough one. Judith was born in Los Angeles, California on June 6, 1978. Daughter of Hungarian immigrants Joseph and Maria Barsi, she, like many child stars, was prepped for greatness by her mother at a young age of five. Her mother taught her posture and poise, and like a dream, she was discovered by a camera crew while out at an ice skating rink. Over the next five years, she would appear in 70 commercials and a number of feature films, the first role being Kimberly MacDonald in 1984's Fatal Vision. One of her most memorable roles was voicing the dinosaur Ducky in The Land Before Time. Hello! I said hello! What is your name? Mother said it's where all the herds were going. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope! <clears throat> My name's Littlefoot. Mine is Tucky. Yep, that is what it is. Yep, yep, yep. She was truly a loved artist and a rising talent in the world. By the time she was in fourth grade, she was making around 100000 a year, which is equivalent to about two hundred and forty-seven k today, and it allowed her family a comfortable living in a three-bedroom home in L.A. When interviewed by the LA Times, her agent Ruth Hansen stated that she was a bubbly, happy little girl, whose success was attributed to the fact that she was small and could pull off roles younger than she was. At age 10, she was 3 foot 8 and started receiving hormone injections at UCLA to spur her growth. Behind the scenes, Judith's life was a chaotic mess, thanks to an angry alcoholic father. Joseph would routinely threaten his own life or the lives of his wife and daughter. His excessive drinking led to three arrests for DUI, and family and friends were well aware of his continuous threats. In December of 1986, Maria reported his abuse to the police, but after they found no evidence of physical violence on her, she decided not to press charges. After this close call with the police, Joseph reportedly stopped drinking, but his alarming behavior only got worse. He'd get into details about how he'd kill his wife and daughter, ranging from cutting their throats if they ever were to leave, to burning the house down. In public, people would catch Joseph subtly scaring his daughter, saying things like, remember what I told you, before she would burst into tears. This psychopath also hid important information about the death of a relative from Maria to prevent her from fleeing to Hungary with Judith. There seemed to be nothing redeemable about Joseph. A neighbor recalled Maria telling them that Judith had received a kite as a gift, but her nightmare of a father broke it into as many pieces as he could just to make sure she didn't experience joy. Judith would tell family friends that she was afraid to go home because she knew her father was going to kill her mother. She explained to a friend that her father threw pots and pans at her, resulting in a nosebleed. She was crying out for help, and everyone was witnessing it. In May of 1988, Judith's agent finally started to notice something was seriously wrong when the child started crying hysterically during an audition and couldn't speak. After the breakdown, her mother was forced to take Judith to a child psychologist who determined, with no surprise, that the actress was suffering serious emotional and physical damage, reporting their findings to Child Protective Services. Maria assured the caseworker that she would begin the divorce proceedings against Joseph and planned to fully move Judith and herself into a Panorama City apartment that she had been renting recently to get away from him. Things were finally starting to look up, but we all know 
That's not how the story ends. Maria and Joseph had been living in a family home, and Maria's hesitation came from not wanting to lose it and all of their belongings. She should have let them go. On Monday, July 25th, 1988, Judith missed an appointment and had been last seen riding her bike in her neighborhood. Two days later, on the morning of the 27th, a neighbor heard an explosion at the Barcy house. They told the LA Times, My first thought as I ran in to call 911 was, He's done it. He's killed them and set fire to the house, just like he said he would. Joseph had done just that. When police arrived, they found Judith in bed and her mother in the hallway. Both had been shot and killed, likely, two days prior, then doused with gasoline and ignited. Joseph was found in the garage with a self-inflicted gunshot wound that took his life. Judith had a bright future ahead of her. She said her favorite role was Ducky, but never got to see the release of The Land Before Time or All Dogs Go to Heaven because both were released after her tragic death. Her tombstone reads, Judith Ava Barcy, our concrete angel. Yep, yep, yep. All Dogs Go to Heaven ends with the song Love Survives, which was dedicated to the memory of Judith. The amount of trauma Judith endured because of her father was a tragedy. There were so many red flags and so many people who saw them. It's incredible to me that no one stepped in sooner to help. As someone who feels so heavily for child actors, this one was hard to research for me. Joseph Barcy was a monster, and he didn't deserve that family. My heart goes out to the family and friends of Judith and Maria Barcy. I hope they finally found peace. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. You can game with me on Twitch four days a week, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well.